good tips for the next race, Robert? Well, then. Uh... Oh, yes, I always back the one with the most horsepower. Welcome to Scrap Heap Challenge, where two returning teams are chomping at the rusty bit to construct crazy contraptions from our stack of scrap. The challenge for the teams this week is to become champion hurdlers. They must build contraptions that can compete over our Scrap Heap steeplechase course. Horses have been hurdling for centuries. Uh, well, at least some have. But getting a machine to even walk has eluded scientists until recently. Imagine how hard it would be to make them jump hurdles. It's fair to say no one has even dared try until now, that is. Welcome to the Scrap Heap Steeplechase. In the starting pen are a set of tractor lovers from Devon. who reel themselves into the semis by hauling in the biggest catch in the car fishing tournament. Top man. Captain Gary with scavengers Steve and uh, Steve are the nuzzling badgers. And in racing green are a trio of Cornish car enthusiasts. They charge their way here by fusing together an electric vehicle to win the mother of all milk rounds. Captain Brian, aided and abetted by Steve and Spencer, are the beasts of Bodmin. OK, teams, your racing challenge has been set and you are now under starter's orders. You have just ten hours to raise your game and jump your way into the winner's enclosure. Go on the sound of the gong. Wait for it, teams, wait for it. Here it goes. Go! Right. <laughs> Jumping. There's got to be something obvious. It's got to step over the hurdles. Step over or jump over or... Yeah, They've either got to lift something over or drive over it. Just can't make it from a car. Can't we a can't car make jump. it from anything. Uh, wheels, long spokes. Not a walking car. Well, similar type of thing, but wheels on the end of the legs. <laughs> <laughs> to ensure our teams don't have a wobbly start, we've invited along a couple of experts. Joining the nuzzling badges is automotive engineer George Wheeler. He told us, if you can think it, I'll build it. Let's hope so. Good morning, gents. I'm George. Hi, I'm Gary. Expert. Hi, Gary. Steve. Steve. And Steve. Steve. Oh, that's nice and easy to remember. <laughs> OK, one of the ideas that I've thought of is something with monstrous wheels but with a space for the uh, wheel to traverse the hurdle. How, so, how big do you perceive these wheels having to be? I big think enough. I think we're going to be talking about four metres diameter. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> the Badgers have every right to be surprised as they're about to embark on building a mega-wheeled 4x4. Four four. Each wheel will have a wedge-shaped slice cut out of them. As they arrive at a hurdle, the missing part of the wheel will allow them to drive over without disturbing it. However, if they don't get the timing just right, they may find they're less high rollers and more steam rollers. So you happy with this build? Yeah. Can't Thanks. see any other options. Well, I don't, I can't see it's, it's, it's yeah. I think yeah. it's gonna be the best thing, closer yeah. to what we originally came up with, the idea of the spoke, so. Yeah. That's yeah. one team happy. Let's hope their opponents yeah. will be too. Only one man can help. The beasts of Bodmin are joined by motorcycle racing legend and bespoke car designer, Steve Dewey Jewison. Hello. I'm your expert. Hi, Dewey. Hi. Brian, the captain. Dewey. Steve. Hi, Steve. Spence. Hi, Spence. <laughs> yeah, well, what have you uh, come up with so far? Well, we some sort of legs with wheels on that you can sort of bring up and move over and then... We need to build a vehicle that's fairly long. I thought that probably six wheels... Uh, no. No, Do we get penalties if it all falls over and we have to stand it up again? No, we get an ambulance trip to the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> the beasts hope to fabricate a stilt car. The power of their vehicle will come from a hydraulic engine. As their stilt car approaches a hurdle, the leading stilts will lift up, 
and drop back down once the hurdle has been cleared. The same will happen with the other wheels. All good in theory, but if they don't balance it perfectly, there'll be more red faces than steeple chasers. So on here, we want to do a shopping list, yeah? Yep. Yeah. So we're needing sort of plenty of steel. The first thing is going to These be a idea. four by four. A box, uh, angle, box, tube. I think lots of scaffold. Angle iron. Heaps of it. Plenty of plate for bracing it, make sure these wheels are strong enough. Come Time's on. ticking, guys. Yeah, yeah, go let's on. go. Come on, Spence. Go, chaps. So it's a huge build ahead. The beasts have to build a vehicle from scratch, and the Badgers are about to build the tallest car in scrap heap history. Those scavengers will have to drag in tons to build those two monstrous machines. So, will our teams fall at the first vent? Or will they overcome all their hurdles? Do you fancy a flutter on the next race, Rob? <laughs> My money's on the nuzzling badgers. By a nose. <laughs> our teams mount their steeds and bolt out onto the heap to pick up the bits to build a car capable of traversing six high hurdles in our first semi-final. The Scrap Heap Steeplechase. The Nuzzling Badgers, a set of tractor lovers from Devon, are bringing in the bits to build an awesome mega-wheeled 4x4. Meanwhile, their opponents, the Beasts of Bodmin, a trio of Cornish car connoisseurs, are sticking together a stupendous stilt car. 17 seconds into the scavenge. That's a record. That is definitely a record. I think so. They always do those jokes about we'll be finished by lunch and they're finished by a thirtieth of a second before the ten hours. Yeah. <laughs> and they're all exhausted and broken, this lot. They'll knock this together in ten minutes. And the car nuts are on a roll, as straight away Spencer is on to another find. Boy, we've got a beautiful army land rover here. Yeah, but I think there's going to be too much stripping down. I think fabrication's the way to go if you can find some metal. The tractor boys can only look on with envy at that Land Rover, but as the beasts reject it, the badgers pounce. We found a Land Rover down there, Gary. Was that a diesel, boys? No, petrol, I would think. I don't know. No. I'm eager. Mm, could be half hour away we're going. We've got the car piled on top of this Land Rover and a load of uh, reinforcing iron to get out the way. Are we talking about half an hour? Say so, yeah, Steve. Yeah. Just drag it all off, I'll go back to Spence. But after a flying start, the beast scavengers soon falter. Spence is having a little difficulty with the definition of a scrap heap. All right, Brian, looking, mate. It's all looking, everything is totally buckled. All of it, it's all rubbish. Well, that's what we got to build with, mate. If it's rubbish, you've got to bring some of that rubbish back here because we've got to get cracking. Well, yeah, boy. Don't be fooled by Spencer's fussy attitude. He wasn't crying over spilt milk in the last round. That's precision engineering. Though. The beasts got their claws into a jeep and fused together an awesome electric off-roader. Right, give it a bit of whirly, Ollie. To tear around the track at a lightning rate to become the fastest milkman in the West. Yeah, before he went out, nobody wouldn't do it. Yes, winners like the beasts know that communication is everything. So, can you hear me? Steve, Steve, can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? You're Spencer. Yeah, I can hear you, all right. Are you with Brian? Just had a little... He can't hear you, Brian. Can you hear me? He can't hear you. Go through me, Brian. I can hear both of you. Oh, he can hear you now. Yeah, I think I found a, a hydraulic motor on a big old crane. It's a bit of a mother. I think it might be too big, it's enormous. Is it easy to bring in? Can you bring some tools out here and we'll see if we can get this pump out? After a quick mix-up, they're back on track. That hydraulic pump may be just what they're looking for to drive the wheels on their stilt car. Meanwhile, the Badger set of wheels is behind this Astra. A little brute force and it'll soon be out of the way. Or maybe not. Uh... With no bits back at the bay, Captain Gary and expert George are chalking out a template for their enormous wheels. Right. 
So that all those points there, you're happy that they're all going to clear the angle of the dangle and stuff yeah. like. Yeah, let's just sketch this hurdle in. So we've got a visual. They're going to be a real challenge, but if anyone can do it, they can. Yes, those nuzzling badgers are used to building outsized contraptions. As they hauled in the winnings last time round by building the world's biggest fishing rod in the car fishing tournament. But the badgers won't be building much at this rate, big or otherwise. That's better, you move some on. Yes, diesel. Bring it on in. Has it got wheels and tyres on it? Yeah. Put the kettle on there and be in two <laughs> George wants to know if it's got leather interior because he's worried about the mess. Thanks, boys. So, what, so, Steve, what are you use, going to use that for then? Is, is that going to be your, your power unit? That is going to be our, yeah, our power unit, four-wheel drive. That's what we were looking for. Oh, it was? All oh, right. Yeah, uh, so we're going to put four really big wheels. It's going to look like a monster truck on spokes. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be good. It would be amusing. Yeah, but there's going to be a piece missing out of the wheel, you say. So it's not a solid wheel in that no, sense? No, because like... of the, the hurdle we've got to climb. Yeah. The broken spoke, if you like, that part right. of the wheel, the hurdle will... Will fit over yeah, the hurdle. Yeah, hopefully. Easily? Easily. And I suppose, presumably, you've got to get it so that it just goes at the right point. Yeah, we've got to sort of time it every hurdle. It'll have to probably we'll have to lift our vehicle, we're thinking, maybe. Right time our wheels up and then climb and then over. over it. Yeah. It is a ridiculous proposition, but I think it, so it requires it, a ridiculous solution. It, really. It'll look good anyway. Yeah, it will look even good. if it doesn't work. <laughs> but I'm sure it'll work. I, I know it will. Because we are and it. sort of nuzzling badges. Well, you'll just yeah. nuzzle it to work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you can right, nuzzle yeah. your way over the hurdles. But it'll take all the badges to nuzzle out that 4x4, which will power their mega-wheeled jumping jalopy. Yeah, come yeah, down and give us a push quick. if you can a minute. Right down the bottom. No, to be fair, we're going to do it. At the other side of the heap are two beastly scavengers who don't need any help. As expert Dewey and Captain Brian get to work on what's already been brought in, scavenger Steve, whilst trying to free the hydraulics, has spotted a simpler option for the engine. Well, I think I've found a motorbike. It looks like a complete one. Can you sit down there, Spence? There's a tail bit of a Kawasaki or something. Yeah, you have to go around the other side, I think. Yes, yeah, can you hear me? Look, uh, we just got a bike here, bro. That's big 550 Kawasaki. We're going to be bringing it back. That sounds ideal, mate. Ideal. Yes, Captain Brian spots that's a top find. They were going for a hydraulic engine, but Brian knows that to win, you yeah. have to adapt. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> right, hold on. And go. So oh, Steve game, and Spence mate. need to get that bike started but they appear to be going round in circles. Will the beast's tip-top techie find out what the problem is? I think it's got no fuel in it, Spence. Whoa, hang on. Yeah, we're going. Well, it's running. Here we are. Let's go. Oh, you little sh Despite the odd hiccup, the beasts are ahead. And back in the bay, they put together the frame for their car with the scaffold they brought in earlier. I can't get it to turn now. Yes, the beasts are putting in a mammoth performance. And they're on to another, more puzzling find. Oh, that's cool. Yep. All right, Spencer. Oh, I see. Oh. So you're going to use that to hurdle This is our hurdles. auxiliary engine. Spencer sitting on that. Yeah, so... Uh... You're winding me up. No, this no. is our auxiliary engine. We're going to change our plan. We can't find any hydraulic motors, okay. so now we're going to think of a simple system. Motorbike engine driving down through a chain to a sprocket on a single axle. Second axle, driven Very by deadly. Spencer. The beasts of Bodmin soon realised that running several hydraulic motors was a bit of an ambitious plan for their stilt car. So, they're going to drive the middle wheels with a motorbike on them. Trouble is, when they lift up the middle stilts, they'll find it'll take their driving wheel off the floor. So, they've employed another engine, in the form of cyclist Spencer. But they better hope he's got the legs for it. I mean, are you quite good at, at pedalling? Are you quite oh, fit, oh, strong? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. pull these four along. Really? Yeah. He's a hero. And a machine. Yeah. Spence had better be a good cyclist, as he'll be up against the Badger's big old 4x4. Nuzzling Badger's on tour. Whoa. 
So that's the Land Rover finally into the build bay. But Captain Gary knows that their opponents, the beasts, are racing ahead. What we could make up the outer side of this rim. If we can get some two inch box, that's what we could do with. But two by two. But two by two be ideal. So he sends out the scavenging badgers to pick up tons of box section to fabricate their massive wheels. They're way behind. But it's not just the badgers who have their eyes on the box. Now, there's enough steel there to give us six legs. Yeah. Really? Ideal. Legs. That, is, that is one of the best finds, that piece of metal. So the beasts are sorted with enough box for their legs. But will there be enough for the badgers' mega wheels? Oh, what's the circumference of the wheel? It's going to be it's 12 metres in total. It's about 10 metres. Is it? Just over 10 metres a wheel. Oh, that's only 7.5 metres. 10 there. metres a wheel? A wheel, yeah. Oh, yeah you got to bear in mind you've got a piece cut out as well. Yeah, no, it's, the whole thing's 12 with that cut out. Is it? That's, that's 30 foot length. Talking about yeah, 10 metres. Yeah, that's 24. They'd be 24 foot length. We need more. So the badgers have to find 40 metres of box section. That's the same length as five London buses. Still, there's always that nice long section next door. Uh, <clears throat> well, there was. Not exactly what they were looking for, but in comes some metal for the spokes. See those badgers, they can find things, they just can't carry them, That's, which is a classic problem. <laughs> it's really putting it on, it's falling back it's on. Just falls off. It's their paws, you see. They they're, can't they're not... grip. <laughs> So how will all those bits of metal come together? Here's one man who can tell us. This week's judge is jumping genius Brian Hanley. He's a former hurdling coach, biomechanics lecturer and all-around engine nut. Brian, I mean, the actual art of hurdling, as in human beings jumping yeah. them, is such a completely different thing. But, I mean, there's presumably there are sp specific skills yeah. as, as well as being fit and strong and able to oh, yeah. bend um... and run. I suppose the mechanics of, of crossing the hurdle are, are similar um, for a person or a horse or a, or a vehicle. It, it, it doesn't really matter. They need to maintain momentum. Yes. I think this will be hard for, for both teams. They're yeah. going to have to stop and then start, start again. Yeah. A hurdler will try to get his leg down as quickly as possible onto the ground so he can continue applying force right. and you know, not slow down. Yeah. So with the Beast's machine, their yeah. middle oh, wheels are the, the powering ones. Yes. And they want to get them up quickly and back down again quickly, yeah. like a normal yeah. hurdler would. I mean, my big worry for the, the badges, which I talked about when I was talking mm. to them, was the, the, the point where their, the, their cut-out section of wheel hits the ground. It's effectively like a flat tyre, isn't it? It just goes, bang! Yeah. I just want, wonder if they'll be able to keep going in that it's, position. That's what might happen is they'll arrive on that flat bit and won't be able to overcome the sort of braking force yeah. uh, in sort of people hurdling. Uh, the athletes try to get the foot that's landing underneath the body because if it lands in front, it's acting as a break right. and they're slowing down. Maybe a slightly more stoppy start hurdle <laughs> race than you're used Probably to. Probably will be. <laughs> and the badgers are having a stoppy start, so they try and bargain for some box. Any of this angle any good to you? Well, we might need a bit. Why don't you want it? Yeah, well, we, we might, but we could if we could swap it for some like two for two box action. We've got some box, but I don't know if they need all of it. You'll have to go and talk to the cat. Yeah, I'll give them a shot. Cat and dry. Cheers. A little subtle bartering could solve all the badger's woes. Hello. We need some box, boys. You can have that. Subtly now, Steve. Well, we're having it anyway. Hi. We're having it anyway. You're not. Oh, dear. No, you ain't. No, you're having that. All right, we're having it, Steve. No, 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 no. And enough, we can trade with you for it. No, we got some no, no, no. Got. We, we got one of our legs cut, look. Got two of our legs cut. We need the other three. Have you got legs. any more of this? There ain't, no. No. We have got to have some box action. Sorry. Sorry, guys, but we are in need. We are. Those unscrupulous badgers are sent back out onto the heap with their tails between their legs. They've cut it. If we can't find it, we're having it. He might be on the end of it when it comes around the corner, but we're still having it. Expert Dewey wisely puts that box safely out of the badger's way. So while the badgers are trying to find some straight metal to build a big circle, that beast of a stilt car is really taking shape. Yeah. 
Hold yeah. on. Two, three. After an exhaustive search, Spence has finally found something of value. They seem to have a decent axle on them. I only wish we would have spotted them two hours ago or more. Right. While Steve and Steve are having a tough time nuzzling for box on the heap, back at the Badger's base, they're trying to work out how to turn that box section into a circle. Exactly how, Captain Gary isn't sure. Uh, do you think uh, to use a pipe bender or try to bend it freehand or with gas or to go, say, every foot with a disc cutter and soften it that way? Whatever you think, really, Gary. Thanks for the confidence, boys. It's taken all morning, but the Badgers have finally pulled in the bits of box to build their enormous wheels. OK, teams, you're halfway round the track. You have five hours remaining. Five hours remaining, team. Thank He's you. a comedian, isn't he, eh? Five hours. Five hours? Five hours, hmm. Been halfway yet. <laughs> So the beasts are steaming ahead on their stilt car as the badgers are about to embark on a benderthon. <laughs> Nothing. Ain't even gone. No, it's as straight as when we started. Our runners and riders are hard at work trying to build a hurdling vehicle. A hick? Stewart's inquiry! Our two teams are halfway through building hairbrained hurdling cars. With a place in the final at stake, things are getting frenetic. The Beasts of Bodmin, a trio of Cornish car connoisseurs, are ahead by a nose. They're trying to make something out of nothing as they manufacture a stilt car from scratch. We got a better car than you have! We got a better car than you have! While the Nuzzling Badgers, a set of tractor enthusiasts from Devon, are driving themselves round the bend, trying to build the massive rims for their monstrous mega-wheeled 4x4. The scale of which has never been seen on scrap heap before. The Badgers' two Steves have picked up a pipe bender and started turning that box into a circle. Excellent. Meanwhile, Captain Gary and expert George get building the spokes and hubs which will give the wheels their strength. It's a monstrous task and time is ticking. Talking of big jobs, the beast scavenger Spence is still out on the heap, trying to get some wheels for their stilt car. the beast's enclosure, the car nuts are careering ahead, sticking together that scrappy steeplechaser. What a booty. Well, I don't know why the starter circuit don't work, but we can bypass it to get it running. No While problem. Steve tunes the engine, Captain Brian hammers home who's boss to expert Dewey. Mark 330 on there. 330. What are you on there? You just mark 330 up there. Up here? Yeah. Mark it on 330. Yep. Yeah. So the centre of our hub needs to be on that. Oh, it's technical stuff, isn't it, eh? Cool. Yeah. Spence comes back in with his hard-earned pillages from the pile and shows off his spoils to the other classic car nuts. God, are you seen the weight of that? I know, it's probably yeah, better off. I only noticed how heavy it was when I took it off. It's not light at all, is it? I think the best thing to do is use one of them one. <laughs> That's another two hours I wasted. <laughs> Spence has been trying to get some wheels for hours. But all along, the solution may have been closer to hand. While Spencer is in a wheelie big mess, back at the Badger set, their really big first wheel is coming together. We've only got one wheel on our wagon. The beauty though, isn't it? Isn't it? Perfectly balanced, look at it. Just leave us to it. We know what we're doing now. Well, you're tire fitters, aren't you? Well, yeah, that's right. But you want to go cartwheel fitters, actually. Cartwheel. <laughs> Let's see if we can pull it out a minute. <laughs> Hang on, gotta go this way. We all know how hard it is to change a push bike tire. Imagine if it was made out of steel. And again. But if anyone's used to big wheels, it should be our tractor fitters. 
Oh, you, sir. You got it. I'll tell bad. you what, that's not bad, you know. Top bit of fabrication, that is. Right. That's pretty good. Right, three more. Oh, that's one wheel. One wheel on my wagon. Never mind, Brian. It's not the size of the wheel that counts. The beast captain takes a break from wheel fitting and lays down the law to the rest of the team. The overall length of frame is, is about 14 feet. Now, we've got to just judge now. There's no way we can work this out where the uh, centre of gravity is going to be from the middle. Well, the thing is, though, Steve, if it's, if it's within a few inches, it doesn't matter, because our body weight either way will do it. So that's four big beasts on that car. How will a Spencer-powered support engine cope? Hmm, time for a rethink, methinks. When I was out on the heap a bit earlier, I bumped into Spencer, who said he was actually going to be cycling to drive one of the axles. Is that still happening? Right, well, we did think about it. That was one of the ideas we, we came up with. But uh, after we built it, we are probably out of breath anyhow, so it's a good idea to have a motorcycle engine. <laughs> Spencer, can you come, come and join me over here? Now, Brian says that you are, you're not going to be cycling anymore. I saw the size of the thing and I got more <laughs> scared every time I saw it. Design number three, and Captain Brian is adapting to circumstance again. Whoa. The Beast Stilt car used to rely on a hydraulic engine. Whoa. And then a Spencer-powered support engine to keep them moving after they've lifted their driving wheel off the floor. Now they're opting for an even simpler gondolier-style approach. Trouble is, if they don't have the muscle, this oversimplification could be really taking a punt. Now, on the way in, Spence, I saw some lovely little wheels. If we would have found them much earlier, we would have used those on the whole vehicle. Tiny little wheels, I reckon they would have worked lovely and they had a beautiful drive system on them. And didn't it take you quite a long time to get them off the donor vehicle? Yeah, it did. I've gone and got a load of junk, which is rubbish, and I've wasted some valuable time. You're finding that quite frustrating? Oh, yeah, yeah. So frustrating, I don't want to cycle anymore. <laughs> While Spence is seething, back at the Badger set, there's a real feat of madcap engineering as they complete their first wheel. Let's hope they haven't overlooked anything. We're going to get this through that door, you That's know. a fair old... Uh, that's a fair wheel. But one wheel won't get them anywhere. Yes, the Badgers have their work cut out. That's better. Two wheels down, but they're two-thirds through the day. There's still half of their massive build to do, and the clock is ticking. Oh, Gary, oh my God, oh, this is so big, I can't even see it. It's bigger, than, <laughs> it's bigger than the human eye can take in. That is enormous. This is one of the wheels. Yeah. But how, how high is the vehicle going to be? Well, it's going uh, mm. to be that high off the ground. Yes. Yes. Rob the daunt him. <laughs> <laughs> But then I can't, I can't understand this. Is it going to go? Yeah, yeah, that's, yes. that's in the, the uh, design. Uh... Oh, that's all part oh, of the yeah, whole yeah, yeah, yeah. concept. Yeah. Just to move those enormous wheels, the badgers will need a ton of grunt. So they picked out a big old four x four, which, if they run in a low gear, should provide more than enough power to get those mega wheels moving. All very well. But when it comes to that big gap, they may find that their cutout sections cut out their engine. It's been a bit, uh, a bit of a struggle today, actually, to get into the thing of it, you know, yeah. and, and get it all actually uh, work in our minds. But um, you know, say so, no, we've never been asked to make a hurdling car before. No, never. no, exactly. I don't, I don't know. know why not. <laughs> While the tractor boys are worried about getting stuck, the car nuts next door are getting stuck in. Three sixteenths of an inch run out. That'll have a lot, in not Steve checks the chain sprocket. Brian gets the legs on. And Spence and expert Dewey sort out how the wheels will raise. There are some people that make a mistake doing this. I know. It can happen easily. Not to professionals like us, of course. Here, Brian, is that straight enough? Yeah, lovely. <laughs> Come on, Brian. Don't just stand there laughing at it. We all know it's silly, but it's uh, it's all we've got. <laughs>
Welcome back to the Scrap Heap Twilight, where we can see our two subordinate male badgers in their natural environment, nuzzling through the refuse. They're after their staple diet of nuts and a big ram. But why would two omnivorous beasts need a diet so heavy in iron? Banners there, little sockets on top. The badgers have realised they could be in a real stink if they don't get those wheels in sync. So they've come up with the ingenious idea of attaching a hydraulic lifting pole to their 4x4. Then they'll be able to lift up the chassis to re-sync the wheel so that the hurdle can pass untouched through the cutout section. But they'd better make sure they make it strong enough to lift all that weight, otherwise that design will be more braking than groundbreaking. <sighs> They seem to have got their prey, so they scurry off back to the set to show the two alpha males. Right, so that's 80 to the pit, Now, then. you may have heard that badgers are clever, and if you were ever in any doubt... All we want, really, is something so we can't get back to anything now. Just to push it down and in, don't we? What we worry about is if we come to the hurdle and the wheels are out of line. Yeah. The hurdle's going to be here. Yeah. Right. This has got to be right out over the hurdle, or it's got to be behind the hurdle. The badgers get to work on their penultimate wheel. And Steve is working flat out on the engine. The alignment for the wheels is crucial. If it's a bit skew if, the whole thing could collapse. Uh, teams, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but you have two hours remaining. Two hours remaining, teams, that's all. I know you need more, but that's all you've got. The beast's back wheels are going on. I'll before. take a bit out of the centre of the drum. It's going to touch. Well, that's good, but that's the yeah, right way. Yeah, but it's going to touch, look. No, it's touching here, unless we put some washers on. The central pivot is put into place. So we could use this as one of the... Can we use that as one of the sides? Could do. If it would work. Uh, if, if, if we put something flat across the top here, look. Yeah, that would work, Brian. That's lovely. As the sun sets on another scrappy build day, things are looking good in the beast's lair. Well, actually, the, the beast's of Bodmin machine, I think, has moved on a great... I'm quite impressed with that. Well, they have something that actually moves now. And as long as it doesn't fall to bits or tip over, which are two <laughs> quite distinct possibilities, <laughs> <laughs> it, it should do it. But, I mean, and, but they seem to have conquered all their main problems, don't they, with the, with the design? Yeah, um, I thought they'd forgotten to put in brakes, but it seems they've just not bothered. Yeah, brakes. Um, I don't know how fast they're going to go. I... No, well, I hope very slowly, because <laughs> <laughs> they can't stop, can they? No, and they can't reverse. But it does look like it will, it, I mean, I sort of can feel that it will do it. Right? The badges at the moment have, well, they've got sort of three and a half wheels, haven't they? They're, they're getting close. Yeah, I think they're finishing their last wheel, yeah. their last giant they wheel. they are absolutely colossal. I mean, until they were standing up, I couldn't really take in no. how big they were. But I think they should rely on building up momentum on the, the wheelie part and then hope to overcome the, the sort of breaking force they're going right. to encounter. So, you, so you, I, I think, think they're going to have to keep, yeah, but they're going to have to keep moving at a constant speed then. Yeah. How you judge the, the, that, that straight distance but with a curved distance on the wheel, I mean, I can't imagine how it's, a bit, it's going to be an, a certain amount of guesswork. Um, yeah. Trial and error. Yes. Um, um, probably lots of error. But it's not the badgers who are looking like they've made an error. The beasts have all but finished their stilt car, but someone hasn't been doing their sums, and they may have made a bit of a botched job. Uh, the wheels don't actually raise. They won't be clearing any hurdles at this rate. Goes from bad to worse, doesn't it? What if we brought this axle up a bit that way, would that? That axle is just too wide for the frame. Uh, teams, you have one hour remaining. Oh, one hour right. remaining, teams, thank you. One hour. One Better hour, put our you. fingers out. While the beasts have a big redesign on their hands, the badgers finish off their mega wheels. In the final hour, Steve gets the engine turning over. Oh, hey! hey. But they've still got to sort out the ram to re-sync their wheels. I don't reckon that bit of tube or two box could take all the weight of the front of the armour over. If that breaks off, that's it. That's to be cut in the wheels. So they get to work, but they'll have a job finishing that ram, never mind making sure it's tough enough. And the final welds go on that remaining wheel. 
but they've still got the biggest job of the day, getting those wheels on. And the beasts are still trying to get their claws into their massive problem. It's so tight, look, it's virtually just sitting there on its own. We've got to come that way. A bit of oil on the pivots the might whole help. Thing. While the beasts are looking cagey, the badgers have to crawl in a huge crane to get their 4x4 high enough off the ground for those enormous wheels. We may have reached, finally reached, the limit of what is scrap possible. You need to spin the wheel around. Which way? Which way? Oh, oh, like it's a reversal of fortunes. After being in the lead all day, the beasts are now resorting to desperate measures. Yeah, it's not bad, is it? Arms no, on. It no, it rolls beautifully. Yeah. Smooth action. It's, pun it's puncture proof. So yeah, you won't get punctures, no. Well, we're level now, we're good. In the nick of time, the beasts sort out their raising issue and the badgers get their wheels on. That's frightening. I'm yeah. scared. That's so scary. <laughs> OK, teams, your time is oh. up and you are into the final furlongs. <laughs> Congratulations. Okay. Yes, oh, teams, tomorrow yes. you'll George. leave the right safety on. of the scrap heap stables for the tough terrain of our very well own done, jump course. Well done, well done great build. Well Amazing done. Build. Well done. Quite incredible. Well done. We got there in the end. That was a tough day, but we got there in the end, I think. <laughs> what a gem. It's been one of the balmiest builds the heap has ever seen. But who will be the prize thoroughbred and who will be the donkey? Will it be the behemoth that is the Badger's Mega Wheel 4x4? Or the beasts of Bodmin's stupendously silly stilt car? Our teams will race head to head. Once they leave the start line, they'll have to gallop over six hurdles towards the finish. First team to cross the line wins. The teams have bodged together two of the biggest, most bonkers machines on Scrap Heap to date. But will they hold it together on our frantic dash to the Scrap Heap Challenge final? Our jalopy jockeys are given the traditional tinkering hour to get their harebrained hurdling machines up to race fitness. The beasts of Bodmin managed to get their floor in and make that stilt car a little easier on the eye with a fetching coat of lime green. You done there, Spence? Yep, done. Sorted. While the Badgers have a titanic tinker on their hands, fitting the hydraulic ram that they'll use to make sure their wheels are placed perfectly. Well, here we are at the course, Brian, and it's all getting very exciting now. I mean, the hurdles look slightly higher than I imagined. You know, you see it on television, they, they make it look quite easy, but yeah. actually they are very high. Yeah. Beasts, how are you feeling now the uh, the race is upon us? Well, right now, everything sort of holds itself together. I think we'll manage it. So is it very important where you distribute all your weight? Absolutely. Yes, yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm a major weight distribution person. <laughs> I can't think why, but... Uh... <laughs> So, I mean, and, I mean, I'm wondering about their clearance as well, the beasts, it's going to be... The, the floor level will clear it, but the problem is yeah. that some of the wheels might not come all the way up. Right. <laughs> oh, oh, look at it! Nuzzling badges. I have seen some frankly insane machines on Scrap Heap in my time, but this one takes the biscuit. Any trepidation at all? No. Nah. Got no wipers. <laughs> <laughs> no wipers, and it is just starting to rain. So I think, in terms of comedy, it's neck and neck. I can't, I can't pick out which is the funniest. Ten out of ten for comedy. Ten out of ten. Five oh, out of ten that. for engineering. Yes. <laughs> the hour is nigh. Time to sort the men from the beasts and badgers. Gauntlets are donned. Our gladiators step up to their mighty steeds. A place in the Scrap Heap Challenge final is at stake. Nothing can stand in their way. What are you talking about? Apart from the British weather. Oh, no! Oh, just when they're about to start! 
Yes, it's the worst storm of the year and it rains cats and dogs on the beasts and badgers. Well, that's your, your classic British summer for you, isn't it? We had a lovely day all day and now, just before the race, we get a little bit of... I think the course is damp. I think that's what you'd probably classify yeah. it as. Um, Formula One cars in this position would change their tyres. They would. This guy, these guys can't. can't. do that. <laughs> In the nick of time, the worst of the weather passes and the race resumes. The teams mount their madcap machines. All they need is to not lose their heads. Beast on your marks! Badgers, get set! Go on the sound of the horn! It's moving! They're both moving! The nuzzling badgers are ahead by a nose. But it's the moment of truth. Ouch! And the beasts storm into the lead. No, no, no. Oh, look at that. They can't push itself over that ridge. No, no. The beasts are up to the first hurdle. Oh, that's a very, very low clearance. It's very close. But they are over it. The middle wheels are lifted and they start punting. It's slow going. But the beasts do actually appear to be working. They are actually getting over the hurdle. Not exactly that fast, to be fair, but they are getting over it. Jack it up flat in the first one. Jack it up, spin, spin. Are we over it, are we? The tractor boys haven't made it past the start line, so they use their ram to lift those wheels to get them back turning. Just look at that 4x4 straining. With a place in the final at stake, the Badgers use all the grunt their 4x4 can give. No, no. Oh, no. gearbox and probably everything else that makes the car move along. In the meantime, the beasts are onto their second hurdle. It's taken them 10 minutes to get this far. Sorry, Jack, but there we are. Yeah, boy. Hey. What's hey. more, they're in the lead. Forward as we go. Hunters. Well, you pump. Once we don't go sideways again. As the beasts punt over the second hurdle, I don't think we'll miss much if we go for a chat. You just haven't really sat, Gareth. Badgers, am I safe standing here? Yeah. yeah. What safe has as houses. happened? I think the transmission's blown. No. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think so. I don't standing. believe it after all that. It's been yeah. a flat tyre, you see? <laughs> flat tyre. <laughs> <laughs> You're still laughing, that's how I like yeah, to say. Yeah, right on, good fun. Well, if anyone deserves a prize for the most insane and fantastic machine ever built on Scrap Heap, it's you. Thank you oh, very I'm much. so, so oh, sorry, yeah. Badgers. Commiserations. Just one of those things. It's a kind of lonely race for them. It's the loneliness of the long-distance hurdler, isn't it? Just, <laughs> yeah. you know, once you're out there on the field, you've just got to keep plodding on. <laughs> Hang on a minute, there's been an incident. The beasts knock over a hurdle. Well, that's about as exciting as it gets. Uh, Rob to Lisa, Rob to Lisa. It's looking very exciting from back here. What, what's it like up where you are, Lisa? To be absolutely fair, those beasts are bodmin. Their machine really is working. <laughs> we, we have some uh, surprisingly happy badgers up by the start line. They seem very, very jolly. They're extraordinary. As Gary said to me, that's motorsport. <laughs> Do feel free to blink. You won't miss much. And they're over it. They've only got one more hurdle to go and they can head to the finish line. I think there'll be some very happy beasts. It's not, you can't really classify this as a neck and neck race, can you? No. It's pretty... Very long neck, you know, the not have to be anywhere near there. If you were thinking of making a cup of tea, painting the flat, perhaps even learning the oboe, it could be a good time. I think I'll spend my time chatting to the badgers. Oh, guys, what a day. <laughs> what a day. <laughs> Poor things. <laughs> it's rattling along at probably two or three miles an hour. They've done it, yeah. The beasts bundle over the finish line. It may not have been the fastest, but it was a real feat of engineering. Well done, beasts! Yes, the beasts have a hero's return to Bodmin, while some sorrowful badgers nuzzle back to their set. 
Oh, I can see some very happy beasts. Not really. Amazing. You're in the scrappy final. How does that feel? Yeah, brilliant. Ice, ice, really ice. Brian, a word from the captain. Did your boys do good? We done brilliantly. We done absolutely magic. Well, it was brilliant teamwork. Your machine worked fantastically, and so did you. You threw to the final. Well done, you. Let's have a look at the stresses and strains on that 4x4 four four again. But it's all bark and no bite for the badgers. It's tearing itself apart. But it was the beast's car on stilts that won the race. Here it is again at a thousand times its actual speed. It's still quite slow. The beasts are victorious. They built a car that can actually get over hurdles and are the first team into the Scrap Heap Challenge final. But it wouldn't have been one of the most ridiculous Scrap Heaps ever without that mega-wheeled 4x4. But you both built quite incredible machines. Some worked better than others. And of course, if there was a <laughs> an award for the maddest looking machine I think we've ever had built on Scrap Heap. <laughs> it would go to our, uh, our people who came second today. But you were absolutely brilliant. So let's hear it for the valiant, the brilliant, the anarchic, nuzzling badgers. Well done! Hey! Hey! But today's winners, who really, against all the odds, really, with a machine that looked about as unbalanced as I sometimes <laughs> feel on this show. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic, guys. Really good. Beast of Bobman, winners this week. Well done, guys. Hey! Oh. <laughs> yes, the Cornish car connoisseurs are victorious thanks to their seriously silly stilt car. And join us again next week when we'll see who they're taking on in the final. Where two more teams face the battle of the build to see who can bodge together the biggest, the fastest monster drag truck. <laughs> <laughs>